Companies Auditors Report Order 2016 Applicability of CARO 2016 It shall apply to every company including a foreign company as defined in Section 2, 42 of the Companies Act 2013 except a banking company as defined in Section 5, C of the Banking Regulation Act, 1949. An insurance company as defined under the Insurance Act, 1938. A company licensed to operate under Section 8 of the Companies Act 2013. One person company as defined under Section 2, 62 of the Companies Act 2013. A small company as defined under Section 2, 85 of the Companies Act 2013, and a private limited company, not being a subsidiary or holding company of a public company, having paid up capital and reserves and surplus not more than 1 crore as on the balance sheet date, and total borrowings not exceeding 1 crore from any bank or financial institution at any point of time during the financial year, and total revenue as disclosed in Schedule 3 of the Companies Act 2013, including revenue from discontinuing operations, not exceeding 10 crore during the financial year as per the financial statement provided the order shall not apply to the auditor's report on consolidated financial statement. Clause Particulars Clause 1. Fixed Assets a. Whether the company is maintaining proper records showing full particulars, including quantitative details and situation of fixed assets. b. Whether these fixed assets have been physically verified by the management at reasonable intervals, whether any material discrepancies were noticed on such verification and if so, whether the same have been properly dealt with in the books of account. c. Whether the title deeds of immovable properties are held in the name of the company. If not, provide the details thereof. Clause 2. Inventories. Whether physical verification of inventory has been conducted at reasonable intervals by the management, and whether any material discrepancies were noticed and if so, whether they have been properly dealt with in the books of account. Clause 3. Loans to Section 189 Parties. Whether the company has granted any loans, secured or unsecured to companies, firms, limited liability partnerships or other parties covered in the register maintained under Section 189 of the Companies Act 2013. If so, a. Whether the terms and conditions of the grant of such loans are not prejudicial to the company's interest. b. Whether the schedule of repayment of principal and payment of interest has been stipulated and whether the repayments or receipts are regular. c. If the amount is overdue, state the total amount overdue for more than 90 days and whether reasonable steps have been taken by the company for recovery of the principal and interest. Clause 4. Loans, Investments, Guarantees and Securities In respect of loans, investments, guarantees, and security whether provisions of Section 185 and 186 of the Companies Act 2013 have been complied with. If not, provide the details thereof. Clause 5. Deposits from Public In case, 
The company has accepted deposits from the public. Whether the directives issued by the Reserve Bank of India and the provisions of sections 73 to 76 or any other relevant provisions of the Companies Act 2013 and the rules framed thereunder, where applicable, have been complied with. If not, the nature of such contraventions be stated. If an order has been passed by Company Law Board or National Company Law Tribunal or Reserve Bank of India or any court or any other tribunal, whether the same has been complied with or not. Clause 6. Cost Records whether maintenance of cost records has been specified by the central government under Section 148 1, of the Companies Act 2013 and whether such accounts and records have been so made and maintained. Clause 7. Statutory Dues whether the company is regular in depositing undisputed statutory dues including provident fund, employees state insurance, income tax, sales tax, service tax, duty of customs, duty of excise, value added tax, cess and any other statutory dues to the appropriate authorities and if not, the extent of the arrears of outstanding statutory dues, as on the last day of the financial year concerned for a period of more than six months from the date they became payable, shall be indicated. Where dues of income tax or sales tax or service tax or duty of customs or duty of excise or value added tax have not been deposited on account of any dispute, then the amounts involved and the forum where dispute is pending shall be mentioned. A mere representation to the concerned department shall not be treated as a dispute. Clause 8. Repayment of dues. Whether the company has defaulted in repayment of loans or borrowing to a financial institution, bank, government or dues to debenture holders. If yes, the period and the amount of default to be reported, in case of defaults to banks, financial institutions, and government, lender-wise details to be provided. Clause 9 and use of monies raised. Whether monies raised by way of initial public offer or further public offer, including debt instruments, and term loans were applied for the purposes for which those are raised. If not, the details together with delays or default and subsequent rectification, if any, as may be applicable, be reported. Clause 10 fraud. Whether any fraud by the company or any fraud on the company by its officers or employees has been noticed or reported during the year, if yes, the nature and the amount involved is to be indicated. Clause 11. Managerial Remuneration. Whether managerial remuneration has been paid or provided in accordance with the requisite approvals mandated by the provisions of Section 197 Red with Schedule V to the Companies Act. If not, state the amount involved and steps taken by the company for securing refund of the same. Clause 12. Nigli Company. Whether the Nigri company has complied with the net owned funds to deposits in the ratio of 1, 20 to meet out the liability and whether the Nigri company is maintaining 10% of unencumbered term deposits as specified in the Nigri rules 2014 to meet out the liability. Clause 13. Related Parties. Whether all transactions with the related parties are in compliance with sections 177 and 188 of Companies Act 2013, 
where applicable and the details have been disclosed in the financial statements etc as required by the applicable accounting standards clause 14 preferential allotment whether the company has made any preferential allotment or private placement of shares or fully or partly convertible debentures during the year under review and if so as to whether the requirement of section 42 of the companies act 2013 have been complied with and the amount raised have been used for the purposes for which the funds were raised if not provide the details in respect of the amount involved and nature of non-compliance clause 15 non-cash transactions whether the company has entered into any non-cash transactions with directors or persons connected with him and if so, whether the provisions of Section 192 of Companies Act 2013 have been complied with. Clause 16. Registration with RBI. Whether the company is required to be registered under Section 45IA of the Reserve Bank of India Act 1934 and if so, whether the registration has been obtained.